Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. Thanks so much for tuning in, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about yoga. I'm going to talk about my yoga practice, I'm going to talk to you about the different practices that I do within yoga, like different classes, I'm going to talk to you about the benefits that I perceive, and the ways that I apply yoga to my own life. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first point, oh, also, full disclosure, I've got some notes here. I don't want to miss any points that I feel like I really want to make, and it will help guide this video in a way that will keep me from going off too many rants, although I do like to rant. I hope that you like them too. I think that's where the real value is. Anyways, for me, something that's very important in my yoga practice is the hierarchy of focus. I focus first on the breath, second on the mind, and third on the body. Yoga. Yoga is the integration of the breath, the mind, and the body coming together through the various poses and things like that. I wanted to make that point. I hope that helps you think about your practice in a different way if you have one. With that said, let's move further. So the mental benefits that I've perceived from my yoga practice. I perceive that I have much more clarity. Clarity both in my life's purpose, clarity in things that are difficult to understand, and clarity in solving problems that I deal with in my normal life, whatever that may be. I also find that I can focus much more effectively, be that focusing studying for an exam, focusing at work, focusing on a yoga practice, focusing on the person sitting across from me at the table, or focusing on this camera and these notes. I also find that I'm much more positive. I just feel better when I do yoga. I, I do, like I enjoy life more. I, I'm happier to be around those that I'm around when I'm around them, and I'm happier to be by myself when I am. Just happier. In addition, when things go bad, I'm quicker to flip the coin. I'm quicker to turn the scene and perceive it in a different way that allows me to once again be more positive. That kind of ties into an elevated level of thought, which is definitely something that I perceive as I practice more yoga. So. When, actually, let me explain something for a little bit now. In the summer is when I do most of my yoga. A, it's when I don't have a membership to the CU Rec Center, so it just makes more sense logistically when I would be paying for a rec membership versus paying less for a yoga membership. But at the same time, I feel called to my yoga practice in these hotter months, in this time of year, in this season. Now, in my yoga practice, I find so right now I've been doing a lot of yoga, and so all these things are kind of fresh in my being, and so I feel like it's a good time for me to make this video. Now with the elevated level of thought, I feel that I can simply grasp things, think about things, and glean insights from and to others about things more effectively, more lovingly, and in more depth when I am doing yoga reason for this I'm not entirely sure I'm simply offering my experience it just feels right I feel like I'm functioning more effectively in breath mind and body all alike in addition stress reduction the simple process of <sighs> of breathing of making sounds of moving my body of releasing tension in whatever way it may go relieves stress and I find that yoga is the most effective way for me to do this and I love it so much for that. Scrolling down here on my notes, I want to talk about physiological benefits as well. Now I don't know too much about the body relative to a lot of people but at the same time I've done a fair amount of research online I feel like I understand a decent amount and I want to give my experience and tie it into what I know about the body. So I can calm my nervous system when I'm in yoga. Now there's the autonomic aspect of the nervous system which is simply what you can't control, but what you can't control is how you react to your perceived reality. What you can control is how you perceive reality. I find that I'm able to perceive reality in a much more calm state when I've been practicing yoga effectively. Now, it 
that ties into a few other points that I make, but at the same time, I'll just say that I my nervous system calms down. I go from being hyped up and being sympathetic nervous system and being cortisol, adrenaline, overdrive, ah, to, to, calm, to parasympathetic, to rest and digest, to be able to move in a way where I love myself and where I'm kind and where I can heal as opposed to break down. At the same time, I feel detoxification. I feel that A, there's the sweat, so my body is moving toxins through the skin, but at the same time, I feel like in the wringing out of some binding postures, which occur more in various practices, which I'll touch on later, I do feel like I'm wringing out various organs that handle toxins within the body. Now we ingest a lot of toxins. Our bodies have evolved to help deal with these toxins. We ingest them in air, water, food, whatever's not food that you still ingest, lifestyle, whatever. We ingest toxins and our body's designed to move them. I simply think that by essentially massaging an organ through a yoga pose, you can relieve toxicity within it. Now, that's kind of woo-woo, not really science-based, whatever, similar to like reflexology or like chiropractics being able to heal your liver or your spleen by releasing tension in a certain part of your spine. I don't necessarily know if that's true. There is some like nuance to it where the nervous system does move through the spine and down into the various areas where those organs may be. So that does kind of make sense, but at the same time, a lot of this is not exactly, like, it's not proven like the fact that Advil helps you relieve pain, or that Advil gives you stomach ulcers. But it's simply my own perception. Now I've also noticed that my breath capacity, my ability to take in oxygen, and my ability to use oxygen within my body has improved dramatically. Now I've suffered from a lot of asthma, I have asthma. I've moved through it to a point where I really don't even notice it anymore. But when I was younger, it was really bad. I would have to use my inhaler before, during, and after soccer when I played a lot of that, and tennis as well when I was younger, all of these things. Um, there was one point actually even where my dad essentially had to save, I mean, there have been a couple times where my dad saved my life, but there was one I remember where I was literally lying on the couch and he was over me. My dad's a doctor, by the way. And he was over me just puffing my inhaler into my mouth from each sporadic inhale I was taking like <sighs> but I find that my asthma is a tightening of the muscles within my lungs and I find that being able to breathe deeply and loosen those muscles through expansion and release allows me to breathe more cleanly more clearly and more depth more effectively and in a way that allows me to be a more effective athlete and allow my muscles to be the limiting factor as opposed to how much air I can take in if you have that if you have asthma I really recommend yoga at the same time I notice opening in various areas that allow me to create structural integrity for instance opening across here allowing my shoulders to come down in a way where I'm not annihilating my spine but I keep my ribs in and my shoulders still move down in a way that allows my body to stand straight. And at the same time, I develop my muscles in a way that allow all this to sort of hold itself together more effectively. There are certain yoga classes that are better for muscular development than others, although there are also some that are more focused, I guess that'd be more structure based, but more instructor based, but focused on structural integrity versus muscular development. I'll get into more of that later actually right now because there are the various practices of yoga which are what I want to touch on next the first one being level two so level one is your basic understanding the poses crescent lunges warrior ones warrior twos horses downward dogs um, really whatever else pigeon is another one that you learn three-legged dog but then you get into level two and level two is much more focused on balances and inversions and understanding the flow between poses and finding length throughout poses all while still again all of these terms are on breath and then mind and then body length length of breath length of mind 
Length of mind, I guess, doesn't really make sense, but you could think of it as length of focus, your ability to maintain focus, and then length of the posture. Now, forest yoga is much more focused on the binds that I was talking about earlier, those detox, you really get into it, postures. Um, at the same time, I find that in forest yoga, I really root down deep into my root, deep into my deeper self, and my depth of presence follows. Now, forest yoga is about as far to the emotional subtle body as my yoga practice has gone because it's simply the m most of that that's offered within Boulder that I've perceived between yoga pod and core power for sure and um, I just love it if you don't know Kate Mulheron she's the forest yoga teacher at the yoga pod on 29th Street she teaches Sundays at 12 15 and Mondays at 5 30 and you should totally go to her class because it will change the way that you perceive yourself and the world around you in a way that I truly can't explain I simply offer my experience and offer the experience to you moving forward now let's talk about hot yoga hot yoga they crank the heat up it feels like a sauna and this is when you get a lot of detox from sweating at the same time you can actually get into much more flexibility because of that heat now some people worry about the safety of various joints and things and you can totally hurt yourself in hot yoga and that is so so true I want to give validity and honor that because it is so true for instance in a pigeon pose you don't want to force your shin up to 90 and then bend as far as you can because a lot of that bending when you're that hot is happening in the knee and that's a very easy way to tear a ligament in your knee like ACL MCL meniscus whatever that may be it's very easy to mess that up so be mindful of that within your hot yoga practice but at the same time it's very more you can get much deeper into certain muscles in hot yoga and you can find new areas of length that then your body knows and can move to this is my own experience I simply find that my flexibility and it just gets a lot better when I do a lot of hot yoga now I want to talk about sculpt yoga this is the one that's more focused on muscular development as I touched on earlier the way that it's done is that you, you move through these kind of basic level one postures but you do them with weights and they add certain movements with weights into the class it's pretty much the hardest workout you'll get if you're doing yoga they even add like a cardio circuit in which is definitely not yoga focused I mean you're doing things like burpees jumping rope jumping jacks star jumps things like that um, and at the same time they do a lot of core work which is come like core circuits that you'll see I guess I don't know like P90X or something but all of these things are based from a foundation of yogi structural integrity and that's what I love about it is that I can focus on developing my muscles and my cardiovascular endurance and things like that which I do love to work on and love to share insights about but at the same time I do it from a base of yoga which it's it's a perfect medley for me you lose some of the authenticity depth of presence focus on the breath of yoga in the instructor and in how prominent that is in the minds of the class when you gain that much of the development part but at the same time, I actually find it as added resistance training, not only for my muscles, but specifically for the focus on the length of the breath and the mind and integrating in that way with the subtle body. It's harder to do it in there. And so when I practice it in other yoga classes, I find that I can do it more effectively in there and, that, and vice versa and in life. So whatever vice versa is for three things. Um, so those are the various practices. Now I want to talk about how I've changed or how I've perceived myself changing as an individual by doing yoga. Full preface, full disclosure, this has not been like a controlled experiment where I'm eating the same thing, sleeping the same way, doing the same thing throughout my day and then adding yoga. That's simply not how I live my life. I don't think that's how most people live their lives. But that said, I've been practicing for over two years now on and off, probably more off than on, but when I'm on, I'm on. And I can just very, like, I can glean these insights from the way that I am without yoga and with yoga. The first one that I want to talk about is detachment. I'm able to detach myself from the ongoings of life around me. I find that, here's a great example. If I studied and got either a good or a bad grade on a test, when I haven't been doing yoga and when I don't glean this, when I don't implement this perspective, 
I will associate the grade with me and with who I am as an individual and how I value myself. But when I've been practicing yoga more, I find that I'm able to more frequently implement the notion and the perception that it is simply my studying that earned that grade, not me that earned that grade. And so it's just a tweak of a knob, studying more or maybe studying less if I really thought it was too easy. It doesn't happen very often. But it's a tweak of a knob as opposed to something that's wrong with who I am as an individual. That actually gives me a lot more confidence when I'm moving through life because I realize that the things that I'm struggling with are not me, it's simply the fact that I'm doing something incorrectly. So that's my detachment from the ongoings of my life. It also gives me a new perspective, kind of that positivity, flip the coin thing I was talking about earlier. I look at life from that detached perspective and then from there fill life with positivity and abundance and joy and love. Love is key. That's actually another point I wanted to make is I love myself a lot more and give myself a lot more room for error in this space and just care for myself a lot more when I'm doing a lot more yoga. That's something that a lot of instructors focus on in their instruction and it's also something that I definitely focus on. It's getting dark so I'm gonna try and speed up a little bit just for the sake of you being able to see me. Um, there's also a focus on community and empathy when I'm doing more yoga. I find that I care more about the individuals around me and that I want to offer whatever value I can provide to them more frequently. For instance, the yoga class that I did this evening gave me the energy to film this video for you. And I hope that you're getting value from it. I also focus on my breath and on simply my focus more. Now I find that I'm able to breathe more effectively. I touched on the asthma point earlier, and I find that I'm able to focus on things more effectively. Be that studying, be that, I don't know, work, be that my relationships with other individuals, especially in conversation with other individuals. I can focus on the other person. Part of that's the detachment and not focusing on the ongoings of my mind, but I care much more about other people. It's also more presence in the present moment. I highly recommend reading or listening, preferably listening to the audiobook, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. He narrates it himself. And the point that I want to make is that when I'm doing more yoga, I come into the present moment as opposed to being detached from it and wondering about the future or the past, which is actually where we spend a significant amount of our mental thoughts. Hi, dog. The last point I want to make is that my structural integrity changes significantly when I do a lot of yoga. My pelvis is able to move more effectively. I have less tension in my hip flexors. My ankles become more buoyant. I've had a lot of, I talk about the buoyant arch of the ankle in my um, deadlift video, which I'll link up if I remember. But it's, it allows for my body to line up in a way that's simply much safer for my joints long term. And I actually think helps with the flow of various fluids and solids throughout my body as well i.e. digestion, i.e. absorption or malabsorption for a lack thereof, um, my nervous system, if my spinal column is aligned versus misaligned, and also cardiovascular flow, whether or not my lungs are open, whether or not I can breathe deeply, I feel like it affects that as well. Okay, last part of the video that I want to touch on is how I apply yoga in my life. So I apply yoga in the relationships that I have with other individuals. I apply that detachment where I simply focus on the other individual. I allow myself to be and I'm there for them, not for me. It's the community that I care about. At the same time, I apply yoga to my academics. I apply that level of focus, that ability to detach and not view it as hard, but simply view it as something that I am doing and detach from the results from it, simply put in the effort. I apply yoga to my exercise. I talked about this a little bit more with the sculpt class. I also, I also talk about some things, like I mentioned the buoyant arch in my deadlift video. I also apply a little bit of it in my morning routine as well. I exercise in a way that's much healthier for my body in terms of structural integrity and also something that just feels much more sustainable in the long term when I'm practicing yoga more frequently both because I understand things better and because my body is more open and can move into those areas more effectively. In addition to that, I apply yoga to self-love throughout life. I care about myself so much more when I've been doing more yoga. And when I do more yoga, 
my mind comes back to that idea of I love myself, I love myself, I love myself so much more often and I'm able to then move through my life in a state of self-love as opposed to a state of wishing that I could do more. So that's it. I hope that this video has been helpful to you. I hope that you're able to give yourself a little bit more self-love after watching this. And I really hope that this has evolved your yoga practice if you have one or enticed you to begin one if you do not. With that, much love to you. Peace, love, positivity, and abundance. Goodbye.